rivet setter has three main perishable tools. The driver, jaws with jaw springs, anvil. Each of these tools is designed specifically for a riveting application. For this demonstration, we're going to have power removed. You may want to have your machine locked and tagged out, but I'm not going to be wearing safety glass or other equipment since we've got this machine in a safe environment. We're going to remove the jaws, and to remove the jaws, there's a single Allen head screw with a nut, and then we'll remove the driver. To make it easier to remove the driver, I suggest removing the anvil first. To remove the driver, we'll need to access the holding screw. To do that, we'll need to manually roll the machine over. I'm first going to trip the clutch by pulling on the solenoid and rolling it over. Now I can loosen the set screw and remove the driver. To install the driver, we're going to want the flat against the tracks and the indent will be positioned so that it's directly behind the set screw. Now we can slide the driver up into position and the set screw will go in the indent provided in the driver. We're going to lock it in place. We want to make sure the flat is oriented toward the, toward the slide guides to prevent damage. Our next step is to install the jaws with jaw springs and auxiliary jaw springs. To do that, we're going to have to bring the machine to the home position, which is fully up. As we tighten the jaw springs, we want to make sure that they're in the slot provided in our vertical. To replace the anvil, you'll need an Allen wrench to loosen the locking set screw. Once the locking set screw is loosened, you should be able to remove the anvil, replace it with a new anvil, and lock it in place. Now that all tooling is installed, we can check the jaw up and down stops. With the, with the jaws in the fully down position, they should be a 30 second above the pin. The set screw at the bottom sets the jaw down stop. It is locked in place with a set screw and jam nut. To adjust it, the jam nut must be loosened and the set screw backed out to lower the jaw down position, turn the screw out. To raise the jaw down position, turn the screw in. Lock it with the side set screw and jam nut. The next jaw position we're going to control is the up stop. We want the rivet to fall into the jaws so the jaw track is slightly above the jaws. We want the jaws to be set three to five thousandths below the track. To do this, there's a jam nut and Allen head screw. To change the position of the jaw up stop, first loosen the jam nut. Turning the screw out raises the position, turning the screw in lowers the position. We want to check that the jaws are in line with the track. We can use a tool which is the body spacer tool we use in our factory. With this body spacer tool, we can slide it in the track and it should fall within the pocket provided in the jaws for the rivet body. With the jaws correctly installed, they should be flush at the bottom and the jaw springs should appear symmetric and even. To check our tooling, we're going to manually curl a single rivet. To do that, we're going to have to roll the machine over manually. First, we'll need to shuttle a rivet into the jaws. As the rivet contacts the anvil pin, 
we can check that the rivet is centered underneath the driver and on the pin. As we continue to roll the machine over, we'll start to curl the rivet and push the rivet through the jaws. In this position, in the curled position, we can see that our driver is centered over the anvil and that we've made a good curl.